Vision and the brain, more than meets the eye. Did you know? Many scientists consider the eye as almost an extension of the brain. First, a little bit about the eye. Series of images showing eye anatomy. The very front of our eye is covered in a clear layer called the cornea. To keep the cornea clear and healthy, our eyes make tears. Most of the tear liquid is produced in the lacrimal glands, but special oils, which help keep our tears from evaporating too quickly, are made by the meibomian glands in our eyelids. In order for us to see, light enters the eye through the cornea and passes through the lens where it is focused on the retina, a light-sensing layer at the back of the eye. Our central vision occurs in a special retinal spot called the macula. In the retina, photoreceptor cells detect light and pass those signals to nerves called retinal ganglion cells. The information is then passed through the optic nerve, which departs the back of the eye and travels to the brain. Information from each eye is processed in the brain in a variety of areas, together called the visual cortex. Slide, stereo binocular vision. Two eyes working together is called stereo or binocular vision. Let's do an exercise to see how that works. Part one. For this exercise, you'll need a pencil, two hands, and two eyes. Hold your pencil out in front of you, one end up. With both eyes open, touch the top of the pencil with your free hand. Child holding a pencil with arm stretched. I'm going to hold the pencil out with my right hand. Now with my free hand, I'm going to touch the top with both eyes open. Try it yourself. Pause your video here. Part two. Now, with one eye closed, Touch the top of the pencil with your free hand. I'm going to try closing one eye and doing it. Child closes one eye and tries to touch the top of the pencil, missing it. Try it yourself. Pause your video here. What was that like? It was easier when I had both my eyes open. Why did that happen? When you have both eyes open, each eye has a slightly different view of the world. Choose side-by-side -side images of a cube on a platform. Your brain overlaps these two images. Two images of cubes overlap, but cubes are not perfectly aligned. And, based on how different the two views are, figures out how far away objects are from you. This gives you depth perception, or 3D vision. Let's do another exercise. You'll need a piece of paper, two hands, and two eyes. First, roll your paper into a tube. Then, with both eyes open, hold the tube up to one eye. Place your free hand midway down the tube, palm toward your face, and look through the tube. Child holds a green paper tube. Roll a piece of paper into a tube like this. Child places hand on the outside of paper tube while looking through tube. Place it in front of one of your eyes. Put your hand like this. Try it yourself. Pause your video here. What did you see? Image of beach with drawn hand over top. In this exercise, one eye is looking at your hand. Image of beach splits into two. The other eye sees the same view, but only through the tube. Left image shows a small circle through tube. Left image superposes image with hand on the right. A hole is formed over the hand drawing with beach image showing through. When your brain overlaps these two images, you see a hole in your hand. It might seem strange, but it's true. Slide, optical illusions. Now, sometimes our eyes fool us. Let's look at some optical illusions. We don't see objects in isolation. Photo of a cup, a ruler, a notebook, and two pencils. Our brain is always comparing one object to the next to figure out how big it is, what shape it is, and even which item is more important. But when we look at simple 2D drawings, sometimes the brain gets confused. Image turns into a drawing. Let's look at a few examples. For these exercises, you'll need a ruler. In the image that's about to show on your screen, what do you see? Blue and black image forming different objects. Some people see a blue vase or cup, but other people see two faces. 
In this image, which frog has a bigger mouth? Simple drawing of frog faces on green background. Frog on left is larger. The one on the right or the one on the left? Press pause and check with your ruler. The mouths on these frogs are the same size, but our brains are fooled by the relative size of the frogs and the direction of the arrows at the side of the mouth. In this image, are the vertical lines straight or bent? Press pause and check with your ruler. Image of diagonal black lines crossing at the center, forming a starburst pattern with two vertical lines on each side of the starburst center. Both lines are perfectly straight, but the starburst pattern can make it look like the vertical lines are bowed outwards. In this image, is the hat wider or taller? Press pause and check with your ruler. Image of a tall hat with vertical lines on the inside edges of the hat. The hat is as wide as it is tall, but the vertical lines in the hat can make the hat look taller. Our next activity is called a Stroop test. It tests how well our brains manage different types of information. Part 1. For the next screen, say the color of each word. Try not to read the words. You might want to pause the video to have enough time. Color names displayed in a grid. Words and colors match. For part two of the Stroop test, on the next screen, say the color of each word. Don't read the words themselves. You might want to pause your video to have enough time. Color names displayed in a grid. Words and colors do not match. Which was easier? Child reading matching word color combination. Green, pink, brown. Orange, black, blue, green, and red. Child reading mismatched word color combination. Red, blue, green, blue, black. Oh, see, it was easier the first time around, right? In this activity, your brain is getting two pieces of information. The word that you're reading, blue, and the color of the word, in this case, also blue. This isn't a problem when both pieces of information agree, but when they don't agree, like when the word says blue but the color is red, the brain has to figure out which one it should pay attention to. This is a lot harder and takes more time. For the next activity, which is actually about motion, you'll just need to watch the screen and notice what you see. You might want to move your eyes across the screen and see what happens. Group circles with cylinder pattern colored blue, black, and yellow appear on screen. What did you see? Although scientists aren't 100% sure how it works, as our eyes travel across the different colored blocks in this image, the different levels of contrast between the colors trigger special motion-sensing neurons in our brain. So the brain detects motion, usually rotation in this image, that isn't really there. Slide eye diseases as we age. As we age, sometimes eye diseases can affect our sight. Men pushing a shopping cart. Age-related macular degeneration is a disease that can damage our sharp central vision. Black spots appear in the center of the image. Glaucoma can damage the optic nerve. Images of an office and a computer screen. Many people with glaucoma begin to lose their peripheral vision first. Edges of image turn darker. Yellow bus runs towards bus stop. Cataract is a clouding of the lens. It can cause blurry, faded vision. Image turns orange and blurry. Men driving a car. Diabetes can lead to diabetic retinopathy. With this disease, changes to retinal blood vessels can lead to vision loss and blindness. Image turns dark with lines and patches. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to lose your sight? Our virtual reality cell phone app can show you what it's like to have one of these diseases. Search NEI VR See What I See in your phone's app store. Girl interacts with See What I See app on a cell phone, then places cell phone in a Google Cardboard device. If you have a Google Cardboard device, you can use it for a full immersive experience. But even without, you can see how these eye diseases affect vision. Interested in learning more? Visit nei.nih.gov slash learn about eye health 
slash NEI for kids. National Eye Institute, nei.nih.gov.